This is the planet we share. Each week, we travel above, below, and across its surface on a journey of discovery. This week in Florida, monkey see, monkey do. Former pets seek their inner wild animal. This is Wild Chronicles. At Florida's Jungle Friends Primate Sanctuary, a monkey named Tessa is the new girl in town. She's been here for just a few hours, but this brown capuchin monkey has already found the best places to get a good meal. Have a few drinks, or just hang out. Tessa's life may seem easy now, but her journey to the Jungle Friend Sanctuary has been anything but a breeze, either for her or for her adoptive mom. I am Tessa's adoptive mother. We got her when she was about three weeks old and have had her for four years now. We got her because my husband and I have been trying to get pregnant for several years and we couldn't and I was wanting a baby and he wasn't really interested in adopting a baby at the time and so my mom and I came up with the idea of getting a monkey and so we looked around and we found Tessa and that's kind of how that happened. Three years after Tessa became part of the Abernathy family, a surprise development. Amanda found out she was pregnant. Amanda worried that sibling rivalry could put the newborn in jeopardy. But ironically, it was the monkey whose health was most in danger. She developed a disease all too familiar to many humans. She had real fruity breast smell and everything. You know, she was drinking a lot, and I started putting two and two together. I thought maybe she was diabetic, and we took her to the vet a couple times, and he finally he checked her blood sugar, and it was running at 1,120. With her glucose at 1,120, I couldn't believe she was still alive. She was pretty near death when uh, Amanda called me. That's a good boy. Here you go, Poochie. Carrie Bagnall is the founder of the Jungle Friends Primate Sanctuary. The facility is a safe haven for monkeys that have been kept as pets, used in laboratories, or retired from movies and circuses. These captive-raised monkeys can't be returned to the wild. They would never survive, and most zoos won't take in former pets. So for a diabetic monkey like Tessa, Jungle Friends is a last resort. I've been checking her blood every three hours, morning, day, night, everything, and you know I've got the baby to take care of, and so we thought she'd be just better off here, and so that way she can get the care she needs. In the wild, monkeys very rarely develop diabetes. In captivity, it's a common killer. The culprit, too much human junk food, not enough fruits and vegetables, an unhealthy recipe for all primates including people. Over a dozen diabetic monkeys have been taken in at Jungle Friends, which means sanctuary staff have their hands full preparing special meals. This is oat milk, oats, and cinnamon. They both help lower the diabetic's um, blood glucose levels. They love it. It's considered their treat. Once the breakfast rush is over, it's time for Tessa to meet her new neighbors. An expert in monkey social behavior, primatologist Aaron Imke, will help wean Tessa away from her human family and form new bonds within her own species. We basically put Tessa in a cage where she's connected to three other groups right now. And so it's up to her as to who she wants to become friends with and who it seems to be most likely to want to become friends with her in turn. Of all the boys next door, Mario gets the first hello. They've made some very friendly vocalizations towards each other and have even been somewhat submissive towards each other. So that they've shown that they're not going to hurt each other and they they're want to play so badly, but they're still a little unsure quite yet. But it's going very well so far. After a few minutes, Mario's bravado wears thin. 
he gets nervous. So when he, you know, where are my friends? You know, <laughs> gotta go back now and start screaming for them. Then you need to mm -hmm. put them back. Then what we'll do, he'll be more anxious now to go back and he'll go tell them about his experience. And they watched a lot of it. So see that everything's fine. She's mm -hmm. a good girl. And now they're all gonna wanna meet the new girl. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, Tessa will sleep with Amanda, but Aaron and Carrie hope she'll soon choose to snuggle with other monkeys instead of her human mom. The next morning, Carrie's up early to prep the daily medications. She relies on a combination of prescription drugs and herbal remedies to treat the various monkey maladies at the sanctuary. Living among humans has not only led to physical maladies, but psychological problems as well. Some of these rescued pets have suffered physical abuse and stress while in captivity. They exhibit classic signs of neurosis in captive monkeys as they pace, rock, bite themselves, or suck their digits. Aaron is researching whether monkeys born in captivity face a higher rate of serious illnesses than their wild-born neighbors. It became clear that it was the young monkeys that were born in captivity, that were bred to be pets, that are dying of cancer and heart disease at three, four, five years old, when they're just juveniles. But then you have these older, elderly geriatric monkeys that were likely caught in the wild, um, and they've had horrible, stressful lives of neglect and abuse and just, you know, horrific stories that I don't even want to repeat. Um, but they somehow are able to cope with it. And they are living strong, active lives even into their 40s. So why is it? And it has to be something to do with prenatal stress or stress they're exposed to as young infants as pets. Aaron suspects that wild-born monkeys develop a stronger immune system because their monkey mothers both nurse and nurture them. In contrast, captive-born monkeys are often pulled from their mothers at less than three weeks of age. Aaron believes that the trauma of this early separation lingers, compromising the youngster's immunity and contributing to a variety of diseases, such as the diabetes that's stricken Tessa. But today, her blood sugar levels are much better, just in time for her second date with Mario from next door. After a tentative start, the two are inseparable. Tessa seems content, and the Jungle Friends staff couldn't be happier. But for Amanda, it's raised mixed emotions. I know it sounds silly, but I mean, I feel like, because I raised her from three weeks old to now, and she, you know, when I couldn't have a baby, she was there for me, and she was my sweetie, and so, yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be really hard, so. But, I don't know, it's silly, but I mean, she is, she's my little sweetie, so. But it is selfish, because that's why I could think of a 100 reasons to put her here, and only one to keep her, and that was because I was selfish, and I wanted her, and I wanted to keep her, and love on her, and all that, but I mean, for their sake, I mean, it's, it's not any kind of life for them. For Amanda, this is the end of a journey. But for the new girl in town, it's just the beginning.